Hello and welcome back to A City Planner Plays City Builders, where we are building the city of Verde Beach. And in the last episode, we focused almost entirely on uh, remedying some of the city's needs, making sure that all the needs were being met, and increasing the land value. And uh, to that end, we started our public works campus out uh, on the far edge of town. And I know that there have been some critiques of this particular decision, one of which I do want to remedy. So looking at pollution, I placed a recycling center very close to our water source, which seems like a poor decision. And I agree with the comments saying that it was. So I am going to relocate that just a little bit further away from our water source so we don't run into any issues. Um, but, you know, I do want to be, uh, uh, you know, aware of the challenges associated with concentrating those uses and make you aware that that is not my long-term intent. Those uses will be spread out over time. Uh, so there are a couple other things I want to remedy, but I want to talk a little bit about today's video and what we'll be get, getting into. Uh, Verde Beach is now fashioning itself a potential tourism destination. We've got this great uh, area that we can use for a park, and I know that it was controversial that I uh, eliminated green away or backed it up for the time being i'm going to recreate it in a, in a more uh, dramatic fashion but I, I did that because i think that we have something here that can be really special and i want to do something special with it and part of what i want to do is build an artificial lake this will remedy two things first of all this is going to be a zoo in the future and to uh, make sure that we're using all the assets available in the zoo, uh, uh, available to us with the zoos, we're gonna need a water source. So that gives us two options. Number one, we could just try to, or try to make the zoo long and reach the shore. I don't love that idea. Uh, idea two is that we make a man-made lake. That makes sense to me for not just the zoo, but also because we have our fire, copter, or fire helicopter depot just on the other side of uh, the interstate with no real way to get water. And if we have uh, an artificial water source here, they'll be able to fly to this water source and put out fires before reaching the river. So we're gonna build that today and we're gonna focus on getting our population to 14,000. Now, why, you might wonder. Two reasons in particular. Number one, I really want to buy this tile over here so that I can make a loop around the park before I really begin it in, in, in any significant way. So this is important uh, to, to be able to, to, to actually build the road around the park and begin uh, building what I think is going to be the downtown, which would stretch from this little peninsula across the shore. Um, the other reason that this is so important is we've been having trouble with uh, cemetery capacity. So we built this new cemetery. Already we have 57 people in it. Our old cemetery is nearly at capacity. And when this fills up, we are going to have massive problems with our death care. So I'd like to get our population high enough that we can remedy this. So that is going to be an important component of this build as well. So those are the two things I want to think about. Um, but before we get there, I do want to do a little bit of roadway naming. Number one, Finch Street. Uh, there were some great ideas there. Uh, one of the ideas I liked the most was Station Road. So we'll just make Finch Station, Station Road and kind of loop it through here, uh, give a nod to the primary purpose of this road. Next, um, uh, we I, I put up a, a survey on the community page about what to do with these half streets. Uh, the streets that are in between, that are normally paths, but in this case, um, and over here as well, it has a street instead of a path. And this is to create smaller lot sizes to make the area a little bit more affordable. And uh, the result that was resoundingly the most popular was uh, actually giving it a completely unique name. Um, one of the most popular answers within that was actually to give it a name uh, unique to the founders of the city. Now, I could spend a whole bunch of time creating a backstory, and I want to do some of that, but I don't want to get too in the weeds. So what I was thinking was it might be neat to name uh, those roads after um, some 
people of significance in the U.S. So I'm going to look up uh, U.S. Treasury Treasury uh, U.S. Treasury secretaries and use that as my naming scheme. So number one is one that everyone should know. Alexander Hamilton. So Hamilton Place will be our half street there. And for Palm, I'll go with number two, and it'll be Walcott Place. And those will, that, that'll be my, my naming convention for these half streets as they develop. Uh, but I'm not sure how many there are gonna be, but they will come up. These aren't gonna be the only ones, and there will be more. Um, so let's get into our uh, into the creation of our little uh, artificial waterway. So I want to be really respectful of the existing grades and really take a look at them before I start this. I want this to be a substantial water body, um, but I need to make sure, number one, I don't want to put it at the high point. I don't want to start it here and, and have a big cliff. So I see this ridge right here is potentially a good spot uh, to, to really act as kind of the edge of the waterway. And I want to taper this with the landscape so that there are no major cliffs. So I'm looking at the grades and I think I'm going to choose B here to be the first, uh, first grade within here. So I'm going to make the initial water body or the, the outline of the water body okay so I have that and now I want to be really 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 aware of the amount of landscaping uh, of soil I have available so I'd love to okay move this out of the way because uh, if I if I I'm going to obviously be storing a whole bunch of lands uh, of soil with this, and I don't want to go overboard. And uh, I'm going to be using uh, to create this. I'm going to be using the freshwater outlet and actually draining the water into here. And I don't want to have to turn this on and off repeatedly. So what I think I'm going to do is actually drain this out to the ocean. So with that, let's get started on a small pathway to the ocean. And I'm going to keep using grades that are slightly lower than what I had to continue this path. At the same time, I'm going to build up a small wall along the side that I can at the uh, slightly later point in time uh, I'll be able to actually take down. Again, I gotta move that window to make sure that I'm aware of my soil situation. I think I may have gone a little bit more extreme in some of these areas than I needed to, so I'm going to back off just a little bit okay so let's take a look without all of this madness over it and see how it looks now I can see some issues right off the bat and I will want to take care of those right away I did go a little extreme on the grading so I'm going to fix some of that now I just really want to make sure that there is a good solid path because I don't want the water to inadvertently spill out. So I'm going to be very, very careful with this. Okay, I think I'm almost at a point that I can be happy with to get this started. So let's get that water pump placed so we can actually see what we're doing a little bit here. Okay, so I'm thinking that it might be neat to place it in between these rocks and then place some other rock formations around it. Um, and one of the things I like to do is I like to place that and then I'll place the rocks and then I'll actually lower it afterwards. So let's have some rocks here. I'm gonna try to get these as tight as I can.
We're gonna do a little bit more here uh, later on down the line. It's a little messy right now, but I think that will be a good start. I do wanna focus on getting the water to this area right away though. Now, this is gonna be a trick. We're gonna need to be aware of where we're bringing our water in because we're not gonna be able to build there. So I'm gonna try to get it right in between these parcels. And then once we're in here, I'm not really all that concerned. It's all public property. Um, we'll just need to be aware when we're placing our zoo enclosures not to overlap that water pipe. So I'm going to place a temporary power line. I don't love this, but I think it's necessary uh, so that we can actually see what we're working with. And now I am going to let this sim while I'm placing, actually I'm going to pause it quickly because I want to place some high vegetation in the area. Let's get rid of some of the trees to start out with. We're going to eliminate all of these eventually. And I am noticing I don't have enough of a slope on the other side of uh, the river to actually or the, of the, of the banks to actually uh, retain the water. So I am going to remedy that a little bit. And truthfully, it's pretty helpful because I have a lot of soil in this area. Oh, and actually lowering it's gonna make it look worse. Okay, so now there at least, there at least there's a little bit of a change there with the grade. Still think it might need to be a little bit more Soften some of these edges so you don't get those dark areas. Make it more of a basin. So on a project like this, you might be wondering why I'm so willing to terraform. And that's because I think that this is a marquee project for the city. If it's trying to become a tourist destination, think about any tourist-like place that you've been. Uh, reasonably uh, in most cases you got to be willing to spend money to make money in the tourism business that means investing in a place that is not at all like home that is unique and makes people feel uh, like there there's a I guess a sense of excitement in the place so I think this will do it okay so let's give it a go and we'll eliminate the trees while this is running. Okay, so I've eliminated the trees in the lake and I realized that I forgot to do something I meant to do. And that was I wanted to place vegetation. Now I'm gonna have a problem now because there's water here, so I'm gonna turn off this outlet for the time being so that things uh, will calm down in this area and I can place the vegetation. I've always thought that this tall vegetation kind of looks like algae and, and really makes for a, a unique aesthetic when placed in the water. So I wanna have a bit of that near this inlet. Okay, now one of the unfortunate things I noticed was that this entire basin is not filling up. Now there's a couple ways that I could remedy that. Number one, I could lower this entire area, but I don't wanna do that if I don't have to. So what I'm gonna try to do is just create some sort of buffer raise it up just a little bit to back things up. Hopefully that will be enough to get this filled. Okay, so you can see it's filling in now, so that's good. We now have our waterway starting to operate as well. Um, I think we need to make this a little bigger though. It's kind of kind of awkward. So Stretch this out just a little bit What one thing that might be neat in this area it would be actually having some sort of water a uh, rock feature like a, a rock cliff Maybe I'll do that in any place where there's a significant
And I just saw a fire helicopter dropping in here to take water, which is perfect. That's exactly what I was hoping for. All right. So I think this is going to work out. Seems like it's doing what I was hoping. Do you want to look at the terraforming just one more time? And I know disappoint people by deleting even more of Greenway. Greenaway. <laughs> and I love that you can kind of see that you can see this uh, lightening up a little bit. All right, we are having some slight issues, so I am going to lower this just a bit. I think that that little bit of terraforming should be enough to keep this moving. Okay. Very good. So I am happy with how this turned out. And I think it's only going to get better with time as, as we let this run a bit. So, let's just slow things down. We'll keep the simulation moving because one of the things I mentioned I'm really interested in is getting the population to 14,000. So uh, we need to start building in this area. Um, as you can tell, we have a high demand for residential zoning and a moderate demand for commercial. So let's start fulfilling some of that demand. And I'm going to continue doing with River Road what I've done with it in the past, which is continue to follow the banks of the shore. I do want to throw in straight segments when I can. It'll eventually make this easier to uh, develop, but that is certainly not my primary driver in any of my decision making. Okay, so now we have River eventually following the entire shoreline. Let's make sure our naming is clean. Okay, very good. Our names are correct. We will deal with, uh, you know, trees and things of that nature in a bit. But right now, I want to focus on getting Sunset Boulevard in the correct place. So to get there, I'm going to continue to build out this grid, albeit a little bit different than before. You're probably, seen, probably noticing that I'm being really, really cautious with uh, this particular street and maybe wondering why. Well, the street that I'm building right now is going to be the future Sunset Boulevard. And as a result, I wanna make sure that everything is smooth, crisp, and makes a lot of sense. Okay, so why don't we just formalize that now? I'm gonna back this up and bring the road over. You're gonna see me building with uh, just two lane roads and this is really for my own sanity i think it'll make it easier for me to actually do my planning using two lane roads now, unfortunately it looks like some of the water features i placed are not going to escape uh, this build this build unscathed Okay, so we have a nice start for this road. So let's get this upgraded. So like I mentioned, this is gonna be the major east-west uh, collector through the area. And we might not have a collector up here. We might be focusing all of our traffic onto this arterial. So this is a very important roadway. Um, you might have noticed our spacing is completely off from where it was before, I'm gonna work on fixing that now.
So now our roads, uh, rather than being gridded, are being dictated a little bit more by uh, the environment that they're situated in. So I think this is a good change of pace for the city and will make this a more interesting shoreline and it'll feel a little bit more natural in the long run as well. Okay, so I'm letting the roads again be dictated by the terrain and as a result you end up with some you know rather unique designs and I think that this is a good development for the area okay so let's finish up with this I don't want to build out too much of this but I do want it to be planned um, and this is one of the ways that you can accomplish that okay so this is the new grid for this area. We need to work it into the park, which is something that uh, to this point we haven't done. Okay, so we have our park outlined and it's significantly smaller because of the water body that I hoped it would be. Uh, so let's take a look again at our natural resources and start thinking about how we can work some of our natural resources back into this area. So I do want to continue to follow our resource boundaries, but I do think I'm going to try to smooth things out a little bit. So that'll be the new outline of the park. When we're developing these neighborhoods over here, I do want to maintain some, um, I want to maintain options. I don't want to have cul-de-sacs uh, or more than a couple anyway. Uh, but I do want to be aware of these areas that are densely forested and work those into the neighborhood design. Just because it's in a neighborhood doesn't mean that it has to be developed. Uh, so let's get utilities in this area and begin some zoning. Okay, and let's also take a look at a roadway naming to see if everything still makes sense. One of the things I see that I've done that I don't love is that I've taken 3rd Street and kind of teed it off here. What I might do is actually turn 3rd Street into Finch, that's what it is right now. That's a major road, so to me it would make sense that we prioritize the development of that road over a side street. Okay, to me this makes a ton more sense. So, we, have, we need to fix our roadway naming conventions and our priority. So let's do that quickly. Okay, so D, Sunset. So I think we lost Evans. But I don't want to completely lose Evans. Let's let's make sure we're keeping it. I'm noticing some odd bending here on River that I don't love, so I'm going to fix that quickly. I also failed to upgrade this road, so I'm going to do that now as well. I don't want people parking on River if at all possible. I'll let them park on the side streets. And I'm gonna to need to go through the city in general and add some parking, because we really don't have much of any parking right now. Okay, let's continue with our roadway naming. Now, our streets are starting to change direction here, and I think I wanna start a new naming convention. And what I'm going to do is name this after President. And these roads will continue out uh, into the future as well. And let's just do some numbered streets again here. Um, we will do avenues in this downtown area, in this future downtown area anyway. 
Okay, whoops. So we're in a good spot as far as naming goes. Ooh, that is kind of ugly in terms of grade. Let's fix up third once. I apologize for all of the focus on third. I'm sure it's just why you tuned in today because you wanted to know how the saga of Third Street ends. <laughs> I'm not sure that that's any better, but it makes me feel, I guess, a little better. <laughs> we should also check out our road priority real quick to make sure that our junctions make sense. This is a collector. I don't want to forget about this. I want to make sure that we're prioritizing through movements on the collector. Okay, now for zoning. So we're gonna to wanna to start building up our density. One of the policies I didn't place in the city just yet is a high rise ban. I think I wanna make that universal. And uh, in the areas where we, we do want really high density buildings, we can implement that policy in those particular districts. So we'll just start out with a bit of density in this area. Again, high-rise ban is in effect. We are also going to need some commercial. Maybe I'll put a bit along the river. Give them some views. I apologize, I reformatted my computer and these, uh, these uh, pop-ups are, are still occurring even though I've told them not to, not to appear. Um, I'll have to take a look into that. Let's let this build up for a second. We're just gonna keep an eye on our on our on our uh, RCI meters and start thinking about the amenities that are gonna be needed in this area. So I mentioned death care is a potential issue. So I think I want to head that off right off the bat and think about an appropriate location for a cemetery. And I think this block might be a good location because it's a large block. So I might just place this right in the center and add a pedestrian path behind it. Now don't think that I've completely abandoned the idea of pedestrian paths. I just forgot about it. <laughs> so I'm, I do want to stop this and get those going here as well. Unfortunately, some of this new development will be eliminated in favor of a path. <laughs> I'm sure they would be tickled by that. Okay, so we've made those connections there. Let's do the same over here with our cemetery. Obviously, you can't connect through the cemetery using this path but I think we could get around it and have a nice quiet area near the future zoo. Now I do want to get power there so this building is working, so I might continue to zone in this area. Okay, so let's work some zoning in here and start to resume our development again. And you'll notice that I'm kind of tapering off the density as we get closer to the older parts of town. And again, I'm not going to zone within the park area. I'm going to be really, uh, really cognizant of that. I think it's, it's really important. Uh, this is a higher density part of the downtown area. We also do have the ability to, to zone um, offices so I think I'm gonna add some office space near the new university area make sure we have water over here though yeah I didn't think that we did so if you watched to this point I'm guessing you're wondering how reasonable is it for a community to take up a project like this and whoa we have an earthquake well, I guess we're going to see what happens. <laughs> I 
Okay, so we got really, really lucky. The earthquake opened up a fault line just across the shore from the city. So we are going to need to, to make sure that we are thinking about disasters in the near future, maybe even the next episode. And you see that there are some areas with damage. So thankfully those are being fixed. Let's just survey and make sure there's no other damage in the area. Okay, so we because we have the uh, disaster response unit, we're able to rebuild city buildings that have been destroyed. And you see that there are fires now, lots of crazy stuff going on. And it looks like the other buildings that have been destroyed have, for the most part, recovered. So I think we, we got really lucky here. Oh, let's see. I know eventually this will uh, recover, but I just, I wanna take care of it. Let's take a look at our industrial area. Mostly unscathed it looks. So we're, we are okay, we got very lucky. Lots of fires all over the place, but uh, it could be much, much worse. So uh, very happy with how this turned out. Because this could have been really bad. But that does expose a major issue in the city, and that is a lack of fire coverage. So we're going to need to do something about that. We're also going to need to do something about the lack of power going across this new waterway. Okay. So I do think that I want to get a uh, high capacity. We're, first, we're going to need to think about healthcare. And you can see that in this new area, we're basically completely bereft of healthcare, uh, fire coverage, basically any need that the community could have. So we have zoned uh, for uh, we have zoned for commercial in this area. So I think this would be an appropriate area to place uh, some of our city facilities. Now I don't want any of these facilities to be located on. Uh, on Sunset Boulevard so that's why I'm placing these near it so we have access but not on it and I'll fill in the areas in between with commercial which is our greatest need and then I'm gonna buffer this commercial from our future residential with a little bit of office Oh, we are having power issues now. Significant power issues. Let's take a quick moment to think about the best way to remedy these. So, a couple power plant options available to us. We have a coal power plant. We have a solar updraft tower. And we have a geothermal plant. Um, I'm thinking that what might be easiest at this point in time, I'd like to do solar, maybe not the updraft tower, thinking maybe uh, we'll, we'll wanna do the solar power plant, but we're not quite there yet. So I think we're gonna do a coal power plant. Um, so when you look at, the, you compare it to the oil, the pollution is higher, power output significantly lower, but it is a lot cheaper. Hmm. Actually, let's go with oil. We have a pretty significant deficit. I think that's because, yeah, our geothermal plant is on fire. This fire over here has just been spreading like wildfire. <laughs> like wildfire would spread. Um, but that really shows that there's a lack of redundancy in our, in our network. Maybe I'll just have another geothermal plant um, that is relatively clean energy. You might wonder why I'm focused on the highway right now. Uh, the main reason for that is I just want the road to, I guess, make a little bit more sense. 
now that we have that, I will eliminate that connection. And I don't know that I love that. <laughs> Okay, maybe that's how we'll handle it. And we'll need to have a straight road back here to get our geothermal power plant situated. I'm probably being far too particular on this particular road. I just really want it to look nice regardless of the kind of area it's in. Okay, so this will at least help us kind of get through some of the issues here. Yeah, this is kind of kind of wonky looking. I don't love it. Maybe I was just getting a little too cute with it, and that was my main problem. <laughs> Just leave that there for now and work around this in the future. Okay, so we've got that going so at least our city's not dying. And we'll have enough power for the near future as well. So... At this point, let's keep zoning along the shore. And I'm going to really start to focus on high density at this point. Now, what other services would we need? We are gonna need schools. We have no education in this area. Even though we have good availability at this point, I think that's gonna change certainly with elementary schools. This is higher density, so we'll need more of them. Now, interestingly, in the last episode, I said that we didn't have enough, um, enough university space, and that's worked itself out with time. I think we could also use another public library in this area to serve these citizens. We'll put that in kind of a prominent location and in the future, maybe do some landscaping around it. And now that we're filling in a little bit, our residential demand and commercial demand are again coming back. Now our offices aren't filling in because we have absolutely zero industrial demand, which is not exactly unsurprising. We have a pretty impressive commercial district or industrial district at this point. Again, did not place my paths. I am slipping today. <laughs> so let's work some of these in. Okay, so not super realistic that I'd be able to wholesale level all these buildings to fix my mistake uh, with the paths, but I really think this is important. There are just a couple areas where I'm not gonna really worry about it. That commercial area that we just built, I think it's important for the area, but not nearly as important as in the residential areas. And in the future, when I place some bus stops, which will be coming shortly, um, these are going to be areas where we focus our bus stops. Okay, so a while ago, before we had an earthquake, I mentioned, uh, you know, how realistic would it be for a city to create a large uh, artificial water body like that? And, you know, I rationalized it a little bit with the, uh, you know, the, the rationale for the creation of the basin. But other cities do this too. Uh, it, you don't have to just be a tourism destination to see the value of an artificial water body. If your city floods a lot, planners and engineers might work to, uh, to add one of these basins as a place to store uh, flood water in, in the case of uh, an extreme rain event. 
So it's not something that is, is completely, uh, you know, wackadoodle. It is something that does happen and is important in certain areas. So again, kind of just continuing to mix some of these uses in. I don't want this to be uh, you know, completely singular use and knowing that we can't have vertical mixed use, trying to in, uh, integrate some of these uses within a, uh, within a block so people could walk to things if they so desired to do so. If they see that things are really starting to fill in and we're kind of at the, the limit of our growth boundary at this point. This is where I figure we would stop growing and hopefully hit 14,000 in population. To this point, it doesn't seem like we are necessarily going to get there just yet. Kind of cover up some of that ugliness of the landscaping with a whole bunch of very large trees and some smaller trees mixed in. Okay, so let's take a look. We have no parks either right now, so let's get some smaller parks mixed in, particularly those with playgrounds. And again, our paths are gonna make this a problem. Let's pause for a second. Again, I don't love doing that, but I think it's very important right now we get some playgrounds worked in here. And maybe even a dog park. We are going to be a dog friendly community. It, you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, you go to a planning meeting and uh, you know, catnip to people, uh, that's terrible, is, is actually dog parks. Um, it's probably the number one request. Any developer that comes in and says, we are going to build a dog park in your community if you let us get this development approved they have a pretty good shot at getting what they're requesting because people just love dogs and dog parks and the idea of, of having a developer shell out the money to get the park built that's very attractive to people okay so we have some parks now i don't think this is going to be enough Especially when you look at the rest of our city. Uh, interesting question. Uh, what is the most valuable district in the city at this point in time? Let's take a look. My guess is Verde Beach Historical District. 56. Oh, 7th Street Farmers Market, 60. 56. Old Industrial, 55. Yeah, it's, it's actually probably this commercial area. And uh, coastal uh, Coast Quarter, not there yet, and part of that is the size of the district. Probably gonna wanna take this down. We're not gonna be developing this today. So this will be a separate neighborhood. We'll need some more neighborhood names. So, if you have any, drop them in the comments. also developed this neighborhood yesterday or not yesterday in the previous episode so we will make this a district all the roads here make it clean maybe extend this one down as well Okay, and we are seeing some trash collection issues spring up in this area um, from time to time. And that's not really unsurprising if you think about what's happening in this area. Um, right now, all of our trash collection is coming from the far western side of the city. And it needs to make its way all the way over here to, to, to be able to, do any, to, to, to reach any of the buildings over here. So we are going to want to take a look at that soon and remedy that. OK, 
Okay, let's finish our zoning in Coast Quarter. And you see that all of our, uh, now that we're starting to fill in, our demand for everything is going up, including our industrials. So that's why we're starting to see some of our industrial buildings fill in, or our, our, our office buildings filling in, which is nice. These are the first office buildings that we have in the community. Interesting. Not enough educated workers. So, um, I think we're 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 moving in the right direction, and we're about to hit our population milestone. And this is huge because we are going to again, like I said, be able to purchase this tile. So let's hit that right about now. All right, big city. A new area we have a liberal arts college campus visiting scholars paths crematoriums garbage collectors advanced inland water treatment plant uh, and then some of our other buildings that are that are useful too so I'm, I'm very very happy that we finally hit big city it opens up a lot to us particularly this uh, so we can now finally build our park area because we have access to the entire area. I do, before I end this episode, want to look at crematoriums and place just a couple. So first, so I think this would normally be an adaptive reuse of a, of a structure. Um, we we can't, obviously can't adaptive, we have no ability to have adaptive reuse in this game. So I will take residential buildings for this. Uh, this type of use would be considered, uh, at least in many zoning codes, it would be considered uh, an institutional land use. It would be allowable in most districts, including residential, which, you know, it, it, that's questionable whether that's a good idea or not. Um, generally, if you have a funeral, you're gonna have a lot of traffic, uh, but it's localized and it, you know, sh short duration, so not the end of the world and most people don't get all of that upset with these neighbors they're quiet neighbors i suppose <laughs> terrible terrible I'm on, I'm on a roll of being terrible so sorry <laughs> um and then one more over here actually why would we demolish a new building we could just place it on the edge of this district can't reuse a new building and that should take care of our, some of our death care problems and maybe give us the ability to empty out this cemetery. So I know that's a lot of uh, crematoriums and now our death care, we have a pretty significant capacity, but uh, I find that the, the logic behind the crematoriums isn't always great. Uh, it's also, before we end this, Think a little bit about our elder care and our child care. So I think that this would be an ideal location for elder care, give them something to walk to, uh, centralized access just off of our main collector. Better location than this, difficult to work this into this area. Uh, the last thing I wanna do is place them next to a cemetery. <laughs> uh, so I will not do that. Uh, child care. We have a little note of, of, of work, workplaces. So again, I think having this near this location would make a lot of sense too. A lot of times hospitals will sponsor childcare. So will churches, things of that nature. Not really churches in the game, um, in the vanilla game anyway, but we do have a hospital and they are sponsoring this childcare center. That's, that's, what, I'm, that's what I'm saying and I'm sticking to it. Uh, so I think that we've we've made some really interesting changes to the city. Uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this build. Uh, I know there was a lot that happened, a lot of building, uh, but we have the ability to do a lot now. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about where we go from here. So if you have any district names, let me know down in the comments. Uh, if you have any road names, do the same. And uh, if you like this video, please consider liking it. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you uh, care to do so and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I release new videos. Uh, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care.
Bye-bye.